around halfway through my first year as a student midwife, a fellow student and I decided to pay a visit to the postnatal ward to use their photocopier. It was 3 a.m. and all was surprisingly dead and quiet. We met another midwife who asked us if we had heard the emergency buzzer go off on the antenatal ward. Neither of us had noticed it. She went on to describe how there were rumors of the wards being haunted. Buzzers going off in empty rooms, crying and footsteps echoing the corridors at night, asked the older ones she had said. Both of us got a chill down our spines and decided to call our adventure to an end, heading back to the chaos and bright lights of labor ward. I forgot all about these tales, most strange things occurring prior to this I put up to my overactive imagination, until a night shift on the antenatal ward at the end of my second year. It was a short placement and almost every shift had been super busy, so it was a relief when we started the shift with a fairly empty ward. Everything was done and the patients were in bed by about 11 p.m., so there was nothing to do but wait the night out. Before I go on, let me explain the way our staff work overnight. This ward generally has around three midwives. Two go on break at around the same time, leaving one to supervise the ward. Most of the time there is a student, so it would generally be one midwife and student supervising. In this instance, myself and my mentor let's call her Anna, were left to supervise the break. I was sat researching some stuff while Stana did online training, when one of the normal call buzzers went off. I went to go see what was happening and realized it was coming from an empty bed. I figured the remote must have hit something which set it off, as it was lying on the floor, so I turned it off, put it back and left. Around 10 minutes later, we could hear sobbing. I looked over at Dana who shrugged saying it must be someone who's started contracting in the third bay. But it sounds like bay one. There's nobody in there who should be contracting at all? I whispered, looking over the list of patients in case I had missed a new admission. Go check it out, I'll follow you in a bit. I got up and started walking towards the bay, and that's when the smell hit me. A sickly sweet smell, mixed with something. Coppery? Not blood, I know that smell, this was metallic. I got near the door and realized there was a shadow standing directly in front of the glass panel. The sobbing had stopped, but I still needed to check to see if our patients were okay. I assumed it was one of them stood in front of the door so I raised my hand to knock, and that when it turned to face me. I froze because at this point I realized how wrong this was. There were only two patients in the bay and the silhouette in the panel was definitely not either one of them. I turned to see if Anna was on her way but I couldn't see her anywhere. When I turned back, I realized the door handle was moving up and down, but instead of pulling the door open, this thing was pushing against it, as though it didn't know how to open it. I noped away from there and half ran back to the desk. I fought with the was it a ghost? Thought for a while but decided I wasn't taking the risk in case some crazy person had managed to get through the multiple locked doors onto the ward. After telling Anna, we decided it wasn't worth waking the other midwives for and we would just check it out together. Phone in hand. Ready to call security, we walked into the room. I wish I could say there was nothing there, but I wouldn't be writing this if that was the case. There, next to the occupied bed, curtains drawn, why couldn't it save us the creepy factor? Was the same silhouette I had seen by the door. Excuse me, you can't be there. Anna sounded better than she looked. No response. Can you please come out now she motioned for me to call security. As I set out to dial, the shadow moved. Now I don't mean like normal movement, walking somewhere or whatever, it literally just appeared. Closer to the curtain, hand pressed up against it. I squeaked and grabbed hold of my mentor's arm, terrified and staring at this thing. Then it started tilting its head to the side, at an unnatural angle. I guess at this point I was glad there was a curtain. Pull the emergency buzzer I looked at Anna who was stood wide-eyed staring at the shadow. Sense finally hit me and I ran to the bed behind me pulling the buzzer and thanking the siren sound for breaking the silence. Of course as soon as we rushed to the door to tell the doctors and midwives who ran into the room that there was a threatening person, the shadow had disappeared. I know I know, if someone told me this I probably would have to roll my eyes muttering of course but this experience still plays in my head over and over, to this day. I'm glad Anna was with me, so I knew I wasn't going crazy. I hate that my response was to phrase in the situation. After years of screaming at the TV telling horror movie actors not to be so ridiculous, I found myself in that exact same situation. Needless to say, I've applied to other hospitals for a job after finishing this course. As much as I love this place, I just can't imagine being the only midwife left covering the night shift. Note, 
I just wanted to say that there are a series of events that have occurred in my years at the hospital, most of them are little things that I've been able to pass off as coincidence or misunderstanding, but I can't think of any logical explanation for this particular story. I also got talking to a senior midwife who spoke to me about things that happened in the 25 years she's been working there. It appears as though this sort of thing isn't completely uncommon. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe for more videos. Oh, and if you liked this story and have your own Reddit account, please upvote the story. Link is in the description.